Hey, what's up? Jason here. Thanks for checking out the channel today. So I'm going to show you how to build a multi-tenant solution with Bubble. There's a few ways to do it, and this can get very complicated very quickly depending on what it is you're trying to build. I'm going to use the simple artist management site to show you the foundations of how to do this, and then drop a comment below if you've got a more complicated question. I assume I'm going to do a bunch of follow-up videos for this. So there are a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to show a mix of both. One is using privacy rules. Rules. Privacy rules in Bubble basically allow you to protect data. So you can set a condition, and if that condition is not met, Bubble won't even send the data to the browser. That's the best way to do it, and then you can just make sure that you don't have a repeating group that's grabbing data that it's not supposed to. The second, and maybe a backup case or a combination of both, is using conditions and clauses in your repeating group. So for example, go get me a list of artists where the organization matches the current user's organization, for example. So that will filter the list as well. But if you don't use privacy rules, in addition to that, there might be cases, especially if your site gets really big, that a piece of data might be showing up where it's not supposed to. So think about how critical data security and privacy is in your multi-tenant solution and use these ideas accordingly. So let's get into the stuff that you're gonna need to do. So here's what we're going to need to set up. So first of all, I'm gonna create a record label thing and I'm gonna have the name and a private details field just to show you how the privacy rules work in a simple way. So just imagine any private details or things only users who are admin users that belong to that record label can see and edit. So the users table, I'm going to have to add the record label so I know what account they're associated to. Now I'm only doing this in a one-to-one -one relationship. I do have another uh, startup that I'm working for where it's multi tenant multi-user, meaning a user can exist in multiple organizations. So it's a list instead of a single relationship. And for this tutorial, I'm only going to use the artist table for an example. So I'm not going to go and add the record label to genres and songs and all those types of things, but this should at least give you the foundation for how to do this. So I'll create the record label thing. I'm gonna to have to add that record label field to everything, that's how I'm going to protect it. Set the privacy rules, add a record label uh, field to users so I know what record label that user is associated to, and then create a security check on the admin page. Now, I don't have a login set up for this, but I'll show you a quick way you can test this because by far the most irritating thing with doing multi-tenant is testing. So logging in and out and making sure that only the people who belong to an organization can see it. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to do it that you can just leave in your bubble app. Even if you deploy to production, you won't have to worry about it. Okay, so here is my artist list. I have six artists in the database, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on Jason Ross being an upcoming artist that is not released yet, but the record label still needs to be able to access the tracks and be able to edit that artist. So let's go into Bubble and check this out. So first in the data things, I have an organizations table, which I am going to rename to record label. I've got uh, the name of it and I've got my private info field just to use as an example. My user thing, I've already added the record label to it. I'm just gonna rename that field for consistency sake. And I don't really have anything else in here right now. And also artists. So I've got my artist information here and I'm just gonna say uh, record labels that can edit. Now that's probably a weird field name, but I am a strong advocate for naming things in a good way because once your app gets big, if you name things in a descriptive way, it doesn't really matter in today's world. It's not like we have an eight byte character limit like we had back in my day, but uh, name things very well and then you'll never forget when you come back. And another tip is use this little comment thingy here to say what this field is for because that can be super useful. But this is basically going to control what record labels can see this artist. It's gonna be a combination of that plus whether or not that artist is released. So this is the field I'm gonna use for the privacy rules and basically set it to if the artist has not been released yet, um, so if it's set to no, then that privacy rule is going to prevent that from being displayed on the public site. So in my data, I have my artists here and I already have this released set to no. Okay, so now let's work on the artist list here. 
So I have no data privacy rules set up for my artists. And what I want to do is I want to set up a record label permission and have this set to if this artist record label record labels that can edit contains current users record label, then I want to be able to view and see everything. Now it automatically clears the everyone else default permissions. So now if I go back here, my artist list is going to disappear because I'm not logged into the site. So now I'm going to have to create a specific public rule. So I want my uh, public view rule to be when this artist released is yes. Now they can see everything. If I go back here and refresh this, it's going to show me five artists because I have set one of the artists to not released. But now if I log in as Bob, and the page loads. Now I can see that artist here. Now I probably would want to do something like put a tag here or something to notify Bob when he's logged in that this artist is not live so Bob doesn't freak out and get fired. So I could do that simply just by changing some text or something like that. So I could just change the name with a condition here. So if I could say if the current cells artist uh, released is no, then just change the font color to red or something. There, so you can put some visual. This probably isn't the best way to do it. But anyway, so now I want to have an admin tool. And the important thing is I want the admin tool to make sure that only that person who is logged in can actually edit that record. So just to quickly test this out again, I'm going to just log in as a different organization. So I'm going to log in as Biff now and Biff will not see that record. So Biff will see these, these five, but will not see the other one. So let me log out. And now I want a simple admin page. And this is where you can use a mix of filters and uh, conditions and things in addition to the data privacy. So for the admin tool, the first thing that I want to do is I want to create two groups. I want to have a wrapper group and the wrapper group is going to be the main content display. So let's just put something in here and put uh, artist list. And I want an error group. Let's see if I have a warning group here. Sorry, no access for you. And then I'm going to use a page load event. So this will basically be hidden unless the person is logged in. So just in case somebody stumbles across an admin page, you can use this to redirect them to a login page or something like that. So I want both of these groups to be hidden and collapsed. I don't want them to be shown on page load. So now if I preview the admin page, I should just get a blank page. And I'm going to go into my workflow and I want to add a when page is loaded event. And what I want to do is I want to show an element. I want to show the wrapper when current user is logged in. And then I want to do the reverse. So I want to show the error when the current user is logged out. Go back and reload my admin page, I should get an error. Sorry, no access for you. So now if I log in as one of my users, say Bob. So that's a simple way to just protect any of your sites. I use this on a lot of my sites here. I do usually a bunch of pre-checks because most of my sites have multiple roles and permissions set up. So I've got a bunch of clauses for checking those roles and permissions so I can display the right group for them. And now let's add the repeating group for the artist list. I want this to be artists. I want to do a search for artists. Now here's where you can use a mix of um, privacy rules and clauses. So if I just did a search for artists, uh, obviously I don't want 
every artist to be displayed in this list. I only want the artists that I belong to. So let's put the, just grab the name here and let's make sure that, change this to a heading. So it's gonna show me all the artists when I'm logged in, which is obviously is not what I want. I only wanna see my artists, so I can set this clause to say, show me all of my artists where the record labels that can edit contains current users record label. So now I should only see one. Okay, two, so I set up data for, okay, ACDC has that record label in there again. So now this is only gonna be displayed for the artists that I can manage. So now if I log in as a different user, say Biff, uh, I haven't created any association for anything, but now Biff will see the artist list and Biff will not be able to see anything. Okay, so that's how you can create a multi-tenant solution. Now, like I said, this can get very complicated very quickly. Data privacy rules are far and away the best ways to deal with this because Bubble will not even send that data to the browser, but you are limited with the conditions you can set. You basically only have four conditions inside your data privacy as opposed to the conditions you can set on elements inside of Bubble. So if I were to go here and just define a test rule, uh, just to show you quickly, you've only got whatever thing you're looking at. So in this case, it's this artist or current user. And the operators, you only have, if the current user is, whatever this condition is or is not, is logged in, is logged out. And if you're choosing the data source for the thing, you've got is, is not, or if it's empty or not empty. So you're pretty limited in setting those up. So your data structure for how you create your things is very, very important. Now, a second way to do this, which I'm just gonna mention, because if you have a smaller site, this might be the way to do it. You could, for example, have a record label here, and then you could add a data type that basically says artist roster, which would be a list of artists. So you could do this as well, and then you could populate this field with a list of artists that that record label or people who belong to it have access to edit. And that can get you kind of the same results, but privacy rules is definitely the better way to go. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit like and subscribe and drop a comment below because I probably will do some follow-up videos on this because multi-tenant can be very, very difficult if you've got a very complicated site. And I'd be happy to answer your questions. So thanks for watching.